Hey everyone, it's Kenji and we're gonna make some chili rellenos. So stuffed chilies. Um, so these are our chilies. I'm using um, pasillas. They're, these are poblanos, so when they're dried they're called pasillas. Some people call the fresh ones pasillas too. Um, but we're gonna start with some poblano chilies. Um, you can also do this with like bell peppers or anaheims if you don't want them. You know, poblanos have a little bit of heat. Ana anaheims come in varying levels of heat. Um, so I've just got my broiler preheated. Um, there are many ways you can roast and peel chilies. Um, if I'm doing a bunch like this, you know, five or six at a time, I'll usually just broil them, which is an easy way to do it. Um, otherwise, you can do them directly on a gas burner. You can do them on a, on a comal, like a just put this directly on your burner. Um, you can also do it on the grill outside. But the broiler works well for when you're doing a, a bunch like that. All right, so while those heat up, um, while those start to broil, I'm gonna make our sauce, which is a simple tomato-based cooked salsa. Um, Roma tomatoes. So chili rellenos, um, this is a dish that we ate a lot when I was growing up. We made, um, we, we didn't, I don't know where we got, we would get fresh poblanos when I was a kid. Um, so what we would do is we would use the canned chilies, canned whole green chilies, um, and we would stuff those with jack cheese, batter them and fry them. I think my dad got the, the recipe out of um, Leon Romero's cookbook. He's the, Leon, Leon Romero was the, um, the chef at Casa Romero in Boston, which is a um, Mexican restaurant. This is, you know, this is one of my favorite dishes of all times. Um, I always order it. I always associate it with, um, there's a style of Mexican restaurant. Well, it's like Calmex or Tex-Mex or sometimes Mex-Mex restaurants in the US um, that I always call hot plate restaurants because it's the type of places where when they, the server brings your food to the table, they say hot plate and they put it down in front of you and the plate is like scalding hot and it's always, you know, and, you, and it comes with rice and beans and maybe a little salad and then always a choice of, um, of something, either, you know, whether it's an enchilada or um, tacos. This salsa that we're making, by the way, is also one that you can do for something like huevos rancheros. It's a very, just a very simple red tomato-based salsa. Um, that is lightly cooked. I'm gonna throw a handful of cilantro sprigs in there. This jalapeno. I'm serving this, my mother-in-law's in town and she doesn't eat a lot of spicy foods, so I'm actually going to use only half of this jalapeno and I'm gonna rinse out all of the seeds and ribs so that the sauce doesn't come out too spicy. You can adjust the heat level however you see fit, so you can use a whole jalapeno with the ribs and the seeds. You could use a serrano, which would be even hotter. Um, or you could use, you know, no chili at all if you want something super mild. We get an onion. Probably put like half of this onion in there. Take a quick look at how the chilies are doing. All right, so our goal with these chilies is that we want them to be charred and bubbly and brown all over, and then we're gonna flip them and do the other side as well, okay? So that is our goal. Let's see how long it takes to get there. It'll probably take like, under the broiler like that, it'll probably take about 10 minutes. Bring them in. All super rough here. You don't really need to do much more than what I'm doing as far as um, slicing it up or anything. The blender's gonna do that work for us. All right, and just a couple cloves of garlic. So there are, um, of course, multiple ways to make chili rellenos. Um, this is one of the simplest. If you go to um, one of my favorite YouTube channels, um, De Mi Rancho a Tu Cocina, which is a um, Mexican cooking channel. It's a woman who uh, cooks stuff in her uh, old kitchen, um, real hardcore stuff like <laughs> live fires, a big comal, um, real just home style Mexican cooking. Um, I love that channel. They have a really, they have a few actually really good chili rellenos um, videos. Um, and one of them they make is actually similar to this, which is how my family made it growing up. All right. <clears throat> the, uh, now we do eggs. So we're gonna do three eggs here. Separate the whites and the yolks.
This is how I like to separate my eggs from the yolks. Um, it's just a, I don't know, it came, became a habit when I was working in a restaurant and you had to separate a lot of eggs at a time. You just do it straight in your hand like that. I think it's the easiest way. You can also, of course, do the old, like, you know, passing it back and forth between the shells to get all the whites out. Okay, and now we're gonna beat these whites until they are stiff with an electric mixer. There are still a few things I prefer to do manually, but beating egg whites is not one of them. We're looking for like a real stiff meringue here. And this is what creates a kind of puffy fried coating on these chilarianos. So when you beat eggs like this, essentially what's happening is that protein in the egg white is kind of cross-linking. Um, and meanwhile, you're incorporating air into here. So you're kind of stretching out you know, that protein matrix that's kind of within the, you know, within the water, watery bit of the egg white. Um, and as it stretches out, it becomes more and more viscous. You incorporate air in there, the proteins, the proteins tighten up on each other. And eventually what could happen is they over-tighten um, and they'll start actually squeezing moisture out again. So you don't want to get to that point. What you're looking for is this. Those are called stiff peaks, you know, where it looks kind of like shaving cream, where it can really just hold its own shape. If you go beyond this, um, you eventually start to break down. Um, yeah, the proteins over tighten and you'll start to, moisture will start to weep out and then your whole thing will break on you. All right, we're gonna add a little bit of, just a tablespoon or so of flour. Pinch of salt. Let me check on my chilies down here. All right, looking good. Black and puffy all over. I'll flip them over. And we'll let those just keep going until that second side is done. Yeah, I know you're not happy. You're not happy about that. Sorry. Oh man. See the oven okay. I hate this oven. It does this thing where it just automatically locks itself sometimes when it feels like it's and I gotta wait for it to go through a lock cycle. Oh well. Alright. While that's going through its dumb lock cycle, I'll add my egg yolks. I strongly do not recommend this oven. Alright, now we're gonna beat those egg yolks in. We wanna be egg yolks and flour in. We wanna be pretty gentle here. We wanna just incorporate it. Okay, we don't wanna beat it so much that the um, the foam starts to break down. And that's about all we need. Okay, so that is our Chilorano batter. All right, I am gonna um, come back when these chilies are done, okay? It's probably gonna take another 10 minutes to go, 10 minutes or so once I figure out how to restart this stupid oven. Okay, I'll come back when these are done and I will see you then. So I will see you in just about five minutes, six minutes, something, I don't know. These are done though. Um, I flipped them one more time just to make sure that all the edges are kind of puffing out and lightly charred. There we go. So that's what we're looking for, kind of soft all over. Oh, there's one little spot there that didn't, that didn't go, but that's all right. What I'll do is I will hit that directly on the burner to finish that off. So you could potentially do your chilies 100% this way, the way I'm throwing it right on the burner right now. You can start them from raw like that. And just do this charm all on every single side. I'm just gonna get those last couple spots that didn't that the uh, broiler missed. Another way you could do this is if you um, you start in the broiler and then if there's any spots that are missed, finish it off with a little blowtorch action. Okay, I 
think we're good there. We're pretty much good here. Don't worry about it getting black. That's okay. Actually, it'll add a little bit of nice smoky flavor to it. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these on the cutting board here. Now, some people like to put these in a plastic bag. Some people put them in a um, paper bag. The idea though, what, however you do it, is that you want to trap some steam in there and that's going to help the skins separate from the flesh, which is our goal here. Um, I do it a way, I do it this way because I think it's better because it doesn't waste a plastic bag or a paper bag. I'll show you. All right, so we just get our chilies here. Just pop a bowl over them like that, and that'll seal it. And um, we're gonna let that sit for just about five minutes. And then we're gonna keep going. So I will see you again in a few more minutes. All right, so, chilies, ready to go. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel them. All right. I love this part of the process, it's always, it's always so appealing to me. All right, so what some people do is they'll throw away um, their skins. I like to actually do this. Um, the one thing you don't want to do is peel these underwater because you will lose flavor. You want actually some of that, you know, that smoky flavor from the skins to end up on the flesh. Um, but instead of throwing out the skins, I put them into a separate bowl of water on the side. And that way you make a sort of charred chili skin tea. And I'm going to use that as the liquid base for my salsa so that we get some of that chili flavor built right into the salsa it also makes it so that these chili skins can be a little sort of slippery and s sticky really hard to get off your fingers um, and so having that little bowl of water on the side that you can rinse your fingers off and actually really helps as well um, so you don't have to do like a super super duper thorough job here it's okay if like little bits of skin cling on like that Totally all right. But there you go, looking for basically that. Okay. I'll repeat that with all of them. What you don't want to do is tear, kind of tear these chilies apart. We are going to cut them open and stuff them, but we want to do that in a sort of organized, controlled manner. Um, you can also, by the way, cook these chilies like this um, a day ahead. Let them steam on your countertop like this, then just shove them in a container, put them in your fridge, let them cool down overnight, stuff them the next day when they're cold, cold or, peel, or peel them and stuff them the next day when they're cold, um, and that'll save your fingertips if you, if you uh, don't, you know, if you have sensitive little, if you got sensitive little fingertips, you can uh, chill, the, chill the chilies. It's nice because there's not a lot of knife skills involved in this. You know, so if you're a little bit slow at chopping, you don't have to worry about it. All right, so we got those here. Now we're gonna slit these chilies open like that. Okay, open them up. And then we're gonna very carefully get the seeds mostly out. Again, you don't have to worry if there's some seeds left in there. Not the end of the world. Seeds and ribs. Oh, this guy already split open. So we'll go. If they accidentally split open like that, just go with uh, the natural split. You don't have to. You don't have to cut a, a brand new seam in them. So the green chilies tend to be a little bit firmer. Um, I actually bought these all when they were green, and they've been sitting on my counter for a couple of days. So some of them started to turn red. Um, I find that the green chilies actually keep their shape a little bit better. Just don't split open as much. Um, but this will work with red or green. All right, so now we're just going to stuff these up with some cheese. I'm going to put that all, all that right there. And we'll see what we're going to do with that very shortly. Okay, so this is mozzarella cheese. You could use um, Oaxaca. You could use um, queso fresco. Basically, any, any kind of cheese you want. Jack is really good. Pepper jack is good. Um, this is just uh, low moisture mozzarella. So a few pieces of cheese in there. Okay, just like that. 
when I was little, we used to do this with the canned chilies. Um, those chilies come with their tops removed, so we would kind of shove the cheese in from the top. And that was always my job, shoving cheese into, shoving the cheese into chilies. There's another very famous um, Mexican stuffed chili dish, um, chiles and nogada, which is, um, you know, one of the national dishes of Mexico, but it's chilies that are stuffed with a meat mixture and then cooked in a cashew sauce with pomegranate seeds. It is delicious, but a very, very, very different thing from this. These are the kind of chilarianos you would want to put into like a taco. I mean, we're, we're going to eat them on their own, of course, but you can put these in a taco. You can put them in a torta. You can stick them in a burrito. They make really, really good tacos and sandwiches. All right, we're going to kind of overstuff that last one. Is there room for this somewhere? You can fit in there. I can fit you in there. I can fit you in my mouth. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make our salsa. I'm going to rinse my hands. We want to have our salsa ready, simmering on the side before we fry our chilies. All right, so I've got a fine mesh strainer here. Okay. And so basically what we've done is we've made this kind of chili skin tea. And what we're going to do is we're going to strain that out into our salsa. So you could, you know, a lot of recipes call for just using water or sometimes chicken stock for the step. You could also, you know, peel your ch chilies and chicken stock if you want double, you know, that chicken stock flavor plus the roasted chili flavor. But I find you get a lot more flavor when you do it this way. Pinch of salt, a little bit more water. Okay, and now we're just gonna puree this. This is this thing where you kind of sear the salsa in order to really rapidly develop flavor. So we want hot oil. And we're gonna pour this in relatively quickly. If you pour it in slow, it's gonna sputter and spit. You're gonna get oil splashing all over you. If you pour it in quickly, it will immediately start to bu bubble and sputter and develop flavor, but you won't get nearly as many uh, of those little bits of flying stuff. All right, I think we're good. Ready? We're gonna go on one, two, three. You can see it immediately sort of start to change color, deepen in color. And it's also gonna deepen in flavor. So we're gonna simmer this. We'll let it reduce down a bit. This is more than what we need for this dish, so I'm gonna actually probably turn this into huevos rancheros tomorrow morning. Got our oil going. Looks like it might be a little bit too hot. Definitely don't want it to be smoking like that. It's probably in the 400s. Now, we'll let this come down a bit. We're looking for oil around 375, 350. So I'll just let that cool a little bit while we finish off our chilies. All right, so for this step, we got our flour. Okay, I'm gonna put my chili in there. Coat it on all sides with flour like that. You don't want the flour going inside, so when you're when you're doing this step, make sure that um, if your chilies, you know, you saw what I just did. If your chilies like have a flap that tends to lay open, make sure you hold it closed while you get it into the flour, because otherwise that flour gets in there and it turns the whole thing kind of gummy. If you're really um, meticulous about this, you can stick toothpicks in there to keep them closed, but I find it's never really necessary. As long as you're kind of careful about how you lower them into the oil, which I'll show you. Okay. All the chili's coated in flour. Let's double check that oil temperature. 
Okay, so our oil is down to 375 ish. That's where we want it. Okay. Salsa's not quite ready, but that's all right. We're gonna work on some other stuff while that salsa finishes up. I'm gonna get my tray there. All right, so now my chilies into the batter. Okay. Get a nice coating. And with making sure that the chili stays kind of closed, all right, we're gonna very gently lower it into that oil. I'm using right here rice bran oil. Um, you could use vegetable or peanut or canola or whatever you want. Um, as long as it's a relatively neutral flavor, you know, so no like olive oil, no like sesame oil, things like that. Walnut oil, argan oil, none of those but any kind of neutral cooking oil. And the idea is that you want to lower these in gently so that the air in the uh, batter starts to expand, okay? And that causes them to float. If you drop them right in, they sink to the bottom, they hit the bottom of the pan, uh, all kinds of bad stuff starts to happen. If you see a little hole like that, just plug it up with some batter, I'm good. They stick to the bottom of the pan, the batter loses its um, puffiness. So you wanna really lower them in gentle. You can also do this, you don't, so I'm frying on a wok, which I think is the best uh, device, best um, implement for frying, but you can do this in like a, you know, like a chicken fryer, like a skillet. If you want, you could shallow fry them. They come out just fine. Um, they do end up getting, you know, like a, spots where they touch the bottom are gonna be a little bit darker, um, but that's okay. I'm deep frying basically just because I had, uh, I was frying chicken the other day and I had all this, ch this oil left over in the wok. So rather than bother straining it out and taking care of that, I was like, yeah, I might as well just fry up some chili rellenos. When your fingers are coated with batter like this, by the way, it protects it from the hot oil. So people are, I know some people like freak out when they see fingers going near hot oil like that, but like you can take a finger of batter and just dip it in hot oil and it's not really going to harm you at all. Um, that's actually one of the reasons why you batter fried foods is because the batter um, is so insulative and it um, prevents the uh, food underneath from drying out. So that's why like beer battered fish, you have this nice puffy beer batter um, and fish is extremely delicate. You never, generally don't want to um, fry it at really high temperatures or cook it at really high temperatures and you know, frying is violent. But the batter, because it so, has so much air in it, it's a great insulator and it keeps your fish uh, from cooking too hot and too fast. In the same way, it'll keep your fingers from cooking too hot and too fast. So when you're frying foods, oops, oops this guy's probably gonna, we're gonna have a little blowout here, that's okay. When you're frying foods, you wanna bring your hand right down to the oil. Because the worst thing you can do is drop fried foods into the oil, because that causes them to splash up. And that's how you end up with burns. All right, so those first ones are ready to flip, I'm sure. Nice and puffy and golden. Look at that, beautiful, huh? And you see, I'm adjusting, I'm gonna adjust the uh, temperature. You want that oil to maintain a temperature of at least like 325 in the 350. Anywhere between like, yeah, 325 and 400 is good. We're at 390 right now, which is a, on the top end of that spectrum of where we want to be. Any higher than that, and what's going to happen is your batter is going to burn before it cooks through. You definitely don't want that to happen. I want to stay flipped over. Come on, there you go. There you go. I feel like doing this is sometimes like getting a dressing a toddler who doesn't want to be dressed. You, you, you take care of one thing and then you put one arm in and then the other arm comes right out. All right, our salsa is looking good. 
You see how deep in color that's gotten? We can reduce this down, but generally this dish you serve with a relatively sort of watery salsa like this, a very loose salsa. But you can, of course, cook it down as much as you want. Yum. All right. I think those first ones are done. Ready to come out. Now, chili rellenos, you can also, I and mean, what I'm gonna actually end up doing because this is the middle of the day right now, but we're not gonna have these till dinner. Um, I'm gonna have one right now for lunch, but the rest of them I'm gonna save for my family for dinner. Um, so chili rellenos, you can absolutely fry them ahead of time, let them sit at room temperature, and just finish them by simmering them in the sauce. This is not one of those dishes, you know, a lot of fried dishes, you're looking for like a really crispy fried texture. That's not what's going on here. Um, with chili rellenos, the, the puffy coating um, actually ends up sort of getting soft and absorbing um, the salsa. So if you've ever had a dish, um, like if you're familiar with the Japanese dish of like um, tempura inside, on, you know, on top of soba or on top of udon, where the tempura, um, or ochazuke, where, where, um, where you put a broth on top of crispy fried tempura, um, the idea is that the fried puffy batter actually has a lot of air space in it. Um, and so it absorbs the sauce and it gets this really lovely um, soft texture that um, is also packed with flavor because the uh, puffy batter is able to absorb the, uh, the salsa. So, but I'm just gonna do one of these for lunch. So I'll take that first one we fried. I'm gonna put it right in the salsa here. Okay, and the rest of these I'm gonna set aside, just let them sit right where they are uh, until dinner time, so a couple hours. And we'll eat them for dinner. A lot of sort of like, you know, fast lunch places or snack places in Mexico, you know, Mexico City, for instance, you'll find that they, you know, they've pre-fried all of their chilies in the morning and they have them sort of sitting in a glass display case. And so when you order them, they drop them into the simmering salsa and they finish them like that. For dinner tonight, we'll have this with some salad, rice, and beans. But for now, I'm just gonna have it as is. Look at that. Can you imagine how good this would be inside a taco or a sandwich? All that oozy, melty cheese. Mm. Love it. You wanna have a few tortillas on the side when you're eating this? All right, folks, oh, I gotta go feed my dogs. They can't eat this, but I'm gonna go give them a, that leftover cheese. Hmm. Can't stop, can't stop. Here, Shabu, come on, come here. Sit, good girl. Come on. Come on, buddy. All right, guys, gals, non-binary pals. These are Chilerianos, and uh, I will see you next time. Bye bye.